Welcome to CSET Biology TCP. I am Mr. Wilson from the TCP Academy. Today we are looking at the May-June 2022 biology paper. This paper was actually done in July instead of May-June in the year 2022. Now we are going to be doing for this video question number two. We ask that you see the other publication. All the videos are used in the same thumbnail. Just look for the number at the end to see which question was answered in the particular video. Be reminded to like, share, and of course, subscribe. When you subscribe, click the notification bell so you will get uh, notified as soon as they are published. Uh, make sure that you like the video so it will add it to your playlist and of course, share the video with as many. You can join us on uh, Saturday, Sunday, Friday evening for our marathon, our crash course on both biology and human and social biology. You want to make sure that this is the chance, this is the time for you to pass. Watch the video to the end so you'll get a playlist for the other questions and other papers that would have been answered in biology, HSB, and agriculture. Let's move on into question number two. Define each of the following terms saprophytic nutrition now saprophy saprophytes are organisms that feed and dead and decaying organisms so they obtain their food from organisms that are usually dead or decaying example of saprophytes there are two groups of saprophytes we're going to have our detritivores and decomposers Etrotrophic nutrition refers to organisms that depend on eat each other are other organisms for food now most organisms uh animals are going to be heterotroph because they are depending on some other organism for food whether it be plant or other organism autotrophic nutrition refers to organisms which make their own food or own nutrition usually they are they do this through photosynthesis or chemosynthesis these are the popular ones Complete table to identify two saprophytes and their food sources. Uh, saprophytes and their food sources. So what I gave you, I gave you both. Decomposers would be our fungi and bacteria. And usually you're seeing fungi feeding on bread that are stale. We usually see that bread mold. That's a fungi. And of course, you'd see uh, detritivores like your wood lice, your millipede, your earthworm. They are feeding on fallen leaf or leaf litter. So that's what, what I did uh, for the sacrifice. I gave about the group an example. Explain two process by which raw material required for making nutrient reach the leaves of a plant. Now, what needed for photosynthesis is taken up by the stem via osmosis, but water enters the root due to the difference in the water concentration between the plant and the soil. The water is then, of course, transported via the xylem to the various parts of the plant or the leaf. Carbon dioxide on the other hand reaches the plant during the process of photosynthesis, where it pretty much diffuses through the stomata of the leaf due to a difference in the concentration gradient of the gases on the outside versus the young seedlings use all the nutrients stored in the cotyledon to start their growth. Explain the process by which the seedlings make more nutrient to continue their growth. Of course, the seed is going to use that stored energy in the cotyledon. And as soon as it sprouts out of the ground, it's going to be depending on the sun for added energy. And that is the reason we can't plant seeds too deep into the ground uh, for them to grow. Because as soon as they exhaust that energy that they have, they are going to die if they don't have other sources of energy. So the seedling use the process of photosynthesis to make food. The process involves water entering the root and carbon dioxide entering, of course, the leaf. The sun's light energy will make water molecule, the greater water molecule, to release oxygen to the atmosphere, while hydrogen will combine with carbon dioxide in the presence of enzyme to form pretty much glucose. And of course, oxygen. 
Now, suitable temperature is very important for this process to take place. And of course, there must be some medium to trap the sunlight, be it chlorophyll, uh, carotenoid, chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, xanthophyll. Something must be there to trap the sunlight. Usually, it's chlorophyll. That takes us to the end of question number two in our series of questions. We are going to be answering question number three in short order. Please be reminded to like, share, and of course, subscribe. Watch this video at the very end. So you'll see the many playlists that we have there for biology, HSB, and of course, agriculture. Join us on the weekend for marathon or our crash courses for both biology and HSB. We've started these classes since April. We are now in May. All the best. As I usually say, study. Last year, many students differed on their CXE exams as they were afraid of failure due to their level of readiness. This year, Mr. Wilson and his experienced team from tcpacademy.teachable.com is here to help you get exam ready. Subscribe for free to tcp-academy.teachable.com. We offer courses in CXC Biology, HSB, English Language, and many others. There are several offerings to each course. Enroll in one today.